All right, all right, all right. Here we are at the end of the Vector Portrait Project. I know it's a tough one. Hopefully you're proud of what you've accomplished, what you've created. What we need to do now is create a simple background. You spent all this time making this cool portrait. So we want to make a simple background that's going to not distract from the portrait itself. Remember the portrait is the centerpiece. So you don't want an elaborate crazy background distracting from it. So I'm going to show you a couple tips of some stuff you can do just to kind of do something simple. Um, first thing is let's have all our layers locked and we're going to create a new layer above the posterized layer which means it will be below all of our other layers. I'm going to hold the option key as I click on the new layer button. It's going to open up layer options so I can rename this layer to something like BG for background. Then if you recall we can't change the color of this white. Illustrator assumes that the background is paper, that you're going to print this document. And whatever color printer you have, that's the, what the color of the background is going to be. So we can't change white. What we need to do is just draw a shape. Okay, so I'm going to take a rectangle. And right now I have white and black. Let me just switch it to actually I'm going to switch it to this uh, white and black gradient right here. All right? I'm going to pick a gradient because I want you to show you a gradient. We're going to do like a kind of quasi vignette. So I'm going to click that gradient and I'm going to make the stroke nothing. And then our document was 16 by 20 so I'm just going to click with the rectangle tool active. I'm going to click I'm going to make sure the width is 16, the height is 20 or whatever size your artboard was and I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to come over to my Align Tools and I'm going to Center and Center. And if it didn't center, make sure that you have your options shown. Click on Show Options and make sure it says Align to Artboard and it will center it perfectly. I'm going to close that. And I don't want right now my gradient. If we look over here at my gradient panel on the right, it says Linear. That means I'm going from black to gray, black to gray, right to left, right? Like in a line, linear. I want it to be radial. So that there's this kind of glow, right? So it's radial from the center, creates a quasi vignette, darker on the outside, lighter on the inside, but then we're going to reverse it. So I'm going to flip flop and make the white on the right and the black on the left. I'm going to show you a halftone effect, kind of like um, old school comic books, okay? So we have that. Now we're going to come up to effect. And we're going to have under pixelate, color halftone. Now my settings are going to be different than yours because I went through and practiced a little bit, changed a few things. Screen angles, 90, 90, 90, 90. That means that they're just going to be aligned in rows, all right? Rows and columns perfectly. If you don't set that, it'll be more random and scattered, which is fine. Traditional effect is in rows and columns. And then max radius of the pixels, maybe I'll try a bigger number. We can change this later. This is how big these little dots are going to be. So I'm going to click OK. So 20, 90, 90, 90, 90. Click OK, and you get something like this this color, these halftone dots. Now, I'm going to take my selection tool. <clears throat> the problem is that effect turned it into a raster image. It is no longer vector. If we stretch this out, it would get blurry. We don't want that. We want our whole image vector. Um, but before that, let's go under the Appearance tab, and you will see there's this effect, color halftone. If you don't like the size of your half tone you can double click and then you can see here there are the options panel comes up I can make it smaller like that and I can click OK I could change these numbers whatever just to kind of experiment I'm gonna leave it at that but now we need to turn this back into vector alright so with my background selected I'm gonna come up to object and I'm going to expand appearance that's the first step expand appearance then I'm going to use this tool called image trace we're going to talk about this more in the future there's some options if we hit this down arrow 
But right now I just want to do a regular image trace. So I'm going to click image trace. What it's going to do <clears throat> is Illustrator is going to look at this picture because that's what it is. It's not little circles. It's not shapes. It's not vector. It's a picture. It's going to look at that picture and try to draw them as circles. So I'm going to click image trace as it does that. And it's going to take a little bit of time, a little bit of progress. And if you look, image trace isn't perfect and our dots are not perfect circles. I know of no way around that. I kind of looked but couldn't figure it out. What we need to do though <clears throat> is do some settings here. So I'm going to come up to image trace panel. I want to ignore white. All right. I want to not have it do anything with that white part. Just worry about the black. I want to take the threshold up to about 250. If you go all the way to the right, which is 255, the whole thing will be black. We don't want that. We want our paths all the way to the right. Our corners all the way to the left. It's going to start to and our noise all the way to the left. All right, that'll round things a little bit better for us. Then we could turn that off and we're going to click expand. Expand is now going to expand it out into individual shapes. So I'm going to click expand. There we go. Now if we look at our background, we have this group that's black, right? It is now vector. I can come under my swatches and I can change that color. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that off. Well, not I'm going to actually turn that group off. Right? I'm going to keep background layer visible. I'm just going to toggle this open and turn that off. I'm going to do a, another rectangle, show you something else here. I'm going to click 16 by 20, just like before. Click OK. We're going to center it. I'm going to come over to gradient, and I'm going to take I'm using dark blue just as an example, but I'm going to take this blue, drag it to the left, and I'm going to kind of swap those colors, something like that, and then I have this vignette, right? You can leave it as a simple vignette like that, experiment with colors, but what this does is it gives a darker border, a lighter center that kind of draws your eye, right? Like leading lines, like there's this little glow behind your subject just to make you, your eyes look at your portrait. You can use this gradient tool and you can drag stuff around, but I wouldn't worry about that yet. We'll cover that later. I can also come in and turn these half tones on. Let's see, I'm gonna move them back up and then I can have a dual effect, kind of like that. And you can experiment. You can make this, these dots, maybe a lighter blue. So if I come into my color, I can even, um, I'm going to do hue, saturation, and black. And I can come and make those lighter. I kind of like that, a little lighter, something along those lines. Um, this would even work with a solid background. So if I came to this rectangle, here and I selected it, right? So if I hit that little circle, it selects this rectangle. And right now it is a gradient fill, a gradient fill. If I come to my swatches and I just make that black, or not black, but that dark blue, I think maybe if you're going to add these half tones as a circular in the middle like this, then maybe a solid background. But if you don't want to have the half tone effect and you want it just like this, I think a solid color is too plain. That's where I would then add a simple gradient. So that's two, two techniques for doing a simple but kind of interesting background. Make sure to pick a color that contrasts nicely with your portrait. Good job. Let's turn those in and uh, see what kind of amazing stuff you guys have created.